dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain me. Mm-hmm. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gates of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray, me a little water in a vessel that I might drink. And she was and she was going to fetch it. He called to her and said, Bring me, I pray, thee a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel, and a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, and I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. Bring it unto me, and after that make thee for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the food of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, nor did the crude oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which was spoke, spake by Elijah. Amen. All right, let's, 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 let's deal with some of the points that are in this in this particular story. Number one, the first thing we, are, we see here is that there was more to it than what she saw. There was more to it than what she saw. She was looking at it from a natural standpoint, but God had already made provision, not only for her and her son, but the prophet also. She was looking at the situation saying, I'm just gonna do this and this is gonna be the end of us. There's no way out, there's no way to make it because she was in a situation that not only was she hungry, but everybody in the place where she was was hungry too. This was not just something in her house, the whole city was dying. The whole city was in the same family. Everybody was facing the same drought. And she had given in to her circumstances. She has given this, it is, she has given in to her circumstances. I don't care what your circumstances are, if they are not in line with the word of God, then never give in to them. Amen. Uh, Never give in to, I don't care if you ain't got a dime in the bank. Don't you open your mouth and say you broke. Mm-hmm. All right. Don't you give in to your circumstances. Don't, this is what I'm teaching you. Don't you give in to your circumstance. Don't you sign for any packages. <laughs> All right. That's I don't right. care if they bring it to your house. I don't care if they knock on your door. Because we understand that despite what we see, there is a greater reality. Every Christian needs to understand this. There is a reality that is bigger than what I see. What I see does not dominate my life. There is a greater reality. There is a reality more real than what I see. There is a reality, there is a truth that is greater than what I feel. And that is the word of God. The word of God has the ability to change any situation that I am in. Anything that I'm facing, the word of God has the power to change that situation if I hold to the word instead of holding to what I see. Amen. There is more to it. All you see is the trouble, but there's more to it. Yes. That's why you don't give up. That's why you don't lose hope. Because all you see is one part of it. There's a whole other part that you don't see with your natural eye. There's a part that is revealed to you only through the word of God. There is a reality that is revealed only through the word of God. The Bible says when trouble comes, he says the way of escape is there also. Thank you, Lord. All right. But all say you want you to see is the trouble because he wants you to give in to the trouble. He wants you to give in to the fear. But the Bible says when temptation uh-huh. comes, uh-huh. a way uh-huh. of escape. Yeah. Yeah. So if the, if the trouble came, then the help came too. All right, now. Thank you. This is, this is this. You have to choose life. 
Yes, hallelujah. In every situation, yes, you choose, choose life. Yes, In every circumstance, you choose life. Yes, there is light. In every situation you face, every battle you face, there will always be an alternative. You do not have to choose death. You do not have to choose the darkness. There is always light available. Amen. Amen. I choose to believe God. Yes, sir. That's right. Despite what I feel, despite what it look like, yes, despite what they're telling me, I have made a decision. Yes. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to walk in the light of the world. Somebody look at you and say, you crazy. I'm not crazy. I am making a conscious decision yes. to choose the light. Yes. Paul said, I don't want this, not Paul, Peter, he, uh, when Jesus told him to cast his net on the other side, Peter said, man, I've been fishing my whole life. I know these waters. I know what I'm doing. But forget it. He says, listen, at thy word, I do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Even though everything you telling me, Jesus, goes against everything I've learned my whole life. Yeah. I've been taking care of my family all these years by doing it this way. But you say do it another way. I'm going to forget everything I've learned. I'm going to forget everything I've been taught. I'm going to forget everything that happened to me in the past. I'm going to do what you say. And because he did it God's way, he received a great outpour. Not because of what he knew, but because he obeyed God. Yeah. Some of us, Jesus said, do it another way. We want to tell, that's not the way you do it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We don't do it like that. Uh -huh. No. You walk in the light. Yes. You make the decision to walk in the light. Amen. This is Amen. what he said do, Amen. and so we're going to do it this yes. way. Yes. All right, let, me get, let me get some principles here. Because I'll be teaching all day on this. All right, principle number one. Giving is an act of faith. Mm -hmm. It's an act of faith. Yes, sir. It's not something that is it, 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 that's connected to your flesh. Mm -hmm. Because from the natural standpoint, from the natural standpoint, from the natural standpoint, giving does not go in line with us as people. Because from the natural standpoint, we have a mindset to get what we need and keep what we need and not be concerned about whether or not somebody else got what they need. Mm -hmm. the, the, that's the natural mindset. The natural mindset is worry about yourself, get what you need, and, and I, whatever happened over there is none of my business. I don't care about what happened there. Mm -hmm. As long as me and my family got it, then we okay. Mm -hmm. That's what's important to me. That's the natural mindset. Mm -hmm. But that's not the way God looks at it. No. That's not the way God feels about it. God wants you to be a vessel in the earth. Mm -hmm. God wants you to be somebody that he is able to use in the earth. Mm -hmm. The only way God can do what he desires to do is he do it through us. Whatever God's going to do in the world, he's going to do it through a person. Yeah. God is not coming down here doing anything unless he's doing it through an individual. He uses people. He uses people to come into your life and to show you what you need to know. Mm -hmm. He uses people to come into your life and bring you to the next level. He uses people to come into your life and to help you in situations and circumstances that you are facing. He works through people. God works through people. He desires to work through you. He desires for you to be a vessel in the body of Christ. He wants you to come to a place of maturity where you, and I said this in Sunday school, where you get up from the table and you are no longer eating yourself, but you begin to serve others. Most Christians never come to the place where they get up and start serving. Most Christians spend their whole life as a Christian sitting at the table table being served. What can they do for me? What is the church going to do for me? What is the family going to do for me? What is the job going to do for me? What is this person or that person? What is the government going to do for me? We're always looking, trying to see what somebody is going to do for me. You don't bless people like that. You don't bless people like that. Because whatever 
you give them dies with them. Okay. Whatever you give them dies with them. Amen. But when you bless somebody who is a giver, not only are they blessed, but whatever you give them continues to be a blessing to others because they are a tool in the earth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. That's why the Bible says to the one who has, more will be given to him. And to the one who has nothing, God said, I'm going to take it from you. Yes, sir. All right, now. Jesus. Not give more to you. Mm -hmm. That's why the government will never work, because they want to give everything to people who ain't got nothing. Mm -hmm. Anything you give to a man who ain't got nothing dies with him. Jesus. Jesus. That's why the system will never work. That's why the system will never uplift people. Because whatever you give to them dies with them. If you give them a thousand dollars, they gonna buy another TV. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Mm. My Lord. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's not kingdom economics. No, yeah. Kingdom economics says you take it and you give it to the one who is doing something with it. Because whatever you give to him, he's going to take it and use it to do something else with that too. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Let me make it real. Let me, let, me, let, let me work with it a little bit here. If Deacon, I'm trying to get you to watch, get you to understand how God looks at money, how God deals with money. If, 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 if Deacon Stokes has a business, a company, mm -hmm. and he employs Ten people, and I have a company, or I have, a, 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 or I work for a company, and I get a certain amount of money from my company, and I take the money that I get from my, that company that I work for, and I use that money to pay my bills and take care of my family as I ought to do. I use, I get my paycheck, I take my paycheck, and I. Take care of the needs of my family. My family survives off of my paycheck. We, all of our needs, all of the bills, all of the groceries, everything that we need is covered by my paycheck. Deacon Stokes has a company. His company supplies paychecks to not only him, not only is his company taking care of him and his family, but he got 10 other people who are receiving checks from him, who take their money home and take care of 10 other families. Who should I give the break to if I'm the government? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I give it to the man who is only taking care of his one family? Mm -hmm. Or do I give it to the man who is not only taking care of his family? If I am the government and if I am designed to, to, to what's best for the country, to break more. The one man or the this man who is taking care of himself and ten other families. See, people don't understand that type of thinking because they only think about me. They only think about me. But see, you got to get out of that mindset if you're going to be used by God. Because God is not just thinking about you. God is saying, what can I do with you? I'm not so. See, you're going to be blessed in the doing. You're going to be blessed because you can help but be blessed when you become a part of the process. So God is not so much just focused on Robin. He said, Robin, how can I use you to be a blessing? You're going to be blessed in the process, but I've got to be able to use you. I'm not just going to funnel it into you and then it stops there. But I want to take you, Robin, and put you on, so to speak, my payroll. You now work for me to be a blessing in the earth. Yes. Number one, giving is an act of faith. Yes, sir. It's an issue of faith. Mm -hmm. it's not, it doesn't make sense to the natural mind. 
Because the natural mind says if you want it, then you have to keep it. You have to hoard it. You have to lock it in. Gibbon says, no, that's not the way we prosper. Mm -hmm. And again, the kingdom of heaven, God says, the way we prosper is by being a blessing to other people. Yeah. That's why the Bible says it's more blessing, it's a better blessing or a greater blessing to give than to receive. Number one, because in order to give, you have to have something to give. Mm -hmm. And then number two, if you give, then you are also a blessing to help whoever it is you are giving to. That's why it's a greater thing to be a giver. Mm -hmm. Because number one, in order to give, you got to have something. You can't have something if you are not. One of the biggest, um, one, 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 and it's what drives me as a, as a, as a man, as a parent, to, uh, uh, um, the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children, children. Uh, 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 there's a scripture in the Bible where Abraham put his wife out, uh, 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 not his wife, but um, the concubine. He put her and the baby out, and he put both of them out the house, and the, 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 um, the concubine and the baby was out there suffering. The mother could not help the child. They were both in the same situation. She was the mother, but she was in no better situation than the child. They were both in the same situation. They were both dying. She was the mother, but she could not save him. She could not help him because she was um, under the, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the she was under the same trouble that he was under. And so what drives me as a man, as a parent, as a grandparent, is to build something so that I will be able to be a blessed. Because this is what the Bible says. He says, a good man, and I want to call myself a good man, but he says, a good man is a blessing or leaves a blessing or an inheritance, not only to his children, but also to his children's children. In other words, God said, I want to do something in you that is so big that that not only does it bless you, Miss Shirley, but it's going to be a blessing to your grandchildren. That's the desire that I have for you. Amen. So you got to you got to change this just me thing because God said I want to do something that's bigger than you. All right. I want to do something in you that's bigger than your generation. Yes, sir. I want to do something in you that's bigger than your lifetime. Yes. When you daddy gone. What I want to do in you is going to still be manifesting and blessing in the lives of those who are connected to you. Yes. He said, Abraham, I want to bless you and your children. God never talks about one generation of blessing. He never talks about blessing one person. Whenever God talks about a blessing, he says, I'm going to bless you and your children's children. He always talks about the lineage. He always talks about the name. He says, what I want to do for you is going to be so big that it's going to be greater than what you can handle by yourself. All right, now. Thank you, Jesus. God has a bigger picture in mind. He has a bigger picture in mind. He's not just thinking about you. He's thinking about everybody that you are connected to. Mm -hmm. The scripture in the Bible says that uh, wherever we go, we are going to take the fragrance of God. Right. The fragrance of Christ will go with us. The fragrance of Christ. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, the fragrance. Everywhere you go, you leave behind blessings. Everywhere you go, you leave the mark of Christ. Everywhere you go, you leave the goodness of God. People, they love to see you walk into the building because whenever you walk into the building, they know you are coming and you're going to leave them better than the way they, let, they came. They know that when you leave, they're going to be better off. You, everywhere you go, there's a fragrance. Yes. We're talking about changing our minds now. We're changing our minds now. Yeah, yeah. We're getting up from the table. We're not sitting at the table wanting to be served, but we're getting up from the table and we're putting on our aprons now. Yeah. We're tying on our aprons now because we understand that we have not just been called to eat, we've been called to serve. All right now. God, what are you going to do to through me today? Who are you going to bless through me today? Who are you going to touch through me today? Who are you going to use me to be a blessing to today? I'm getting up from the table. I've been sitting down long enough. I've been eating long enough. They've been waiting on me long enough. They've been serving me long enough. Now I'm getting up and I'm putting on my apron and I'm changing my mindset. I'm going from being a eater to a server. I'm going to serve now. Faith is an 